Hello everybody. This talk is the called the woman caught in adultery again and it's the addendum. You will be relieved to know this piece is shorter than its predecessors, but it is the most important piece of the three. It's not Nigel's fault that he thought there were only two parts to my talks on the woman caught in adultery. I hadn't told him about this third piece because I had no idea how it would come together or even if I could actually bring it together. And then life got in the way a bit to delay things as well. Really, the heading for this talk ought to be The Woman Caught in Adultery and the Cross. We have so many elements in this encounter that are played out later as Jesus willingly sacrifices himself to death on that cross in order to save us sinners so that we might not be condemned. Condemning the woman, we have the Pharisees and religious teachers on Satan's side against Jesus. We have Jesus, the only person ever who is without sin, full of love and compassion determined to save the woman from her accusers. He makes himself a target for hate and puts himself in the firing line of the punishment that should have been meted out to the woman. We have the woman representing not the one particular sin for which she has been brought to Jesus, but for Jesus, any sinner and any sin. The woman is saved. She is not condemned, not by the Pharisees, not by the teachers, not by anyone in the crowd, and crucially not by Jesus. She is free but must repent and can, can live out the rest of her life joyously loving her Saviour. At Calvary, hate doesn't win, but Jesus sacrifices himself for all of us so that our sins might be forgiven. He puts himself between us and our sins, taking them onto himself. He shields us, takes our punishment, pays our price, our debts, so that we can walk in freedom. Of course, I'm talking about two events of vastly different scale here, and perhaps it is very wrong of me to make any comparison. But for me, it is useful. Why? Because the cross is so awesome that I have difficulty sometimes in relating that sacrifice to me personally. If you knew the depths of iniquity, the blackness from which I have been saved, you too would find it difficult to understand how Jesus would even have bothered to look at me, let alone how he could have gone through all that agony for me. But then, if I look at the woman in that scene outside the temple, then I can relate to her. I can say to myself, yes, I can fit into the perspective of that scene. Therefore, if Jesus was willing to save her, I can more readily understand him saving me. And then the cross becomes a personal sacrifice for me and for you. What I knew in my head can now sink deep into my heart and soul. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. And well done to you for listening to yet another of all those warblings. Bye for now.